Hello. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Celedonio Sainz, and I welcome you to this webcast about high throughput weight and multi channel pipette calibration. This to ensure precision and accurate results. But before we begin, um, we will send you the recording. And please feel free to submit your questions using the tool at any time. And we'll do a Q&A section at the end. Also, I, I encourage you to please fill the survey at the end or contact us at the global RPM at sartorius.com. So for the questions, we will answer on real time questions in English and questions in other languages are welcome and will be answered offline in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Indonesian, Vietnamese, and others. The speakers today um, are Dr. Esther Padli, who studied biology at the University of Szeged in Hungary and earned her PhD in pharmacology, where she gained experience in the field of neuroscience. Following her PhD, she was awarded with the Humboldt Fellowship for Postdoctorate uh, Researchers and worked, worked at Pharmacology Institute of the Medical University in Heidelberg in Germany. During this time, she has further educated herself in business project and product management. She has joined Sartorius in 2017, and she is the product manager for premium weighing solutions and is actively involved in new projects for product development. Also, Tony Kowalski, who studied uh, applied chemistry at the College of Science and Technology, Newcastle, Upon Tyne, England, and earned his diploma in chemistry. He was employed by a bulk chemical manufacturer initially in quality control, then in product development learning um, GLC, HPLC, AAS, and counter uh, culture counter instrumental techniques. Following from uh, this and with uh, experience gain moved to a research post at the University of Newcastle. He joined Sartorius in 1984 and held several positions, including technical manager, senior product manager, channel manager, and manager of metrology for premium mass comparison solutions, and is actively involved in both sales and product development. As your host, I'm the regional business manager in APEC for La Boying, and in behalf of Daniel Aridis Lang, Dylan Chan, Puramate Jatikanon, and Ashok Kumar, I invite you to get in touch with our or your local Sertorius contact for promotions, updates, and local support. So, Tony, thank you very much, and the stage is yours. Good morning, hi, and my name is Tony Kowalski, and today I'm now manager now for metrology on a global basis, and would like to take some time to present you some advantages that are gained using automation in mass metrology, and also to look a little bit later in some advantages for volume calibration of micro pipettes. So the agenda uh, you'll see we'll start looking at the applications of uh, mass metrology and then moving on to uh, some uh, high throughput um, advantages through uh, robot solutions and then 
I will take you into uh, some automated uh, carousel type uh, applications. And of course, what's important is the handling of data and we have uh, some opportunity here for uh, software to manage the business of calibration and explain in, in more detail when we reach that point of the presentation. And finally, we'll look at multi-channel for pet calibration solutions. And again, with that, there are opportunities for also automating the calibration process through software. And finally, at the end, there will be time for questions and hopefully we get the answers to you as well. So let's look first at what typical are. And of course, the most important is traceability back to the national uh, kilogram, which is referenced used in each of the countries globally. And that's normally performed by uh, what we call dissemination. And this is largely uh, and well solely the uh, function of the National Metrology Institutes who, who maintain the traceability back to their national standard. Obviously, uh, a lot of the weights are manufactured uh, in some of our key manufacturers, and they'll be doing uh, calibration initially of all the brand new weights which are manufactured and sold globally. And these weight manufacturers will be making weights and calibrating uh, to class E1, uh, right the way down to the lower classes used more for industrial applications. And then of course, once the weights have been in the market for a year or two years, they will be coming back uh, to be recalibrated. And this could be either a simple one-to-one -one comparison of the, the test weight against a reference or by a substitution comparison. And typical uh, laboratories that are performing recalibration could be the national labs. Uh, of course, there are in areas like the US or, or China, many large provinces, each which have their own provincial or, or state laboratories, uh, India as well. And there are also a local government labs which are calibrating and recalibrating weights. And we find even some of our larger companies that have many sites are setting up one mass lab uh, in a central location and calibrating even their own weights. And not to forget, we have a lot of private mass laboratories also handling calibration. So the basic uh, starting point for a lot of laboratories, and we'll see uh, manual mass comparators uh, used extensively in, in most of our uh, customer groups. And with a manual mass comparator, it is mostly used as a one-to-one -one comparison reference weight against a test weight. And manual comparators, you can cover really the complete range from one milligram up to 50 kilograms, even uh, as high as class E1. And today you'll see a lot of uh, comparators that have moved forwards in uh, their technology and capability. So the Sartorius Cubus MCM have integrated climate sensors so they actually measure temperature humidity and air pressure at the actual point at which you're making the calibration right by the the weighing pan additionally there are applications integrated into these comparators for metrology so the integrated software which is there as a standard feature will allow you to calibrate, record the results, determine the conventional mass, calculate the uncertainty, and because you have the integrated sensor for the climate conditions, apply an air buoyancy correction where it is needed. So advantages of manual mass comparators, I guess, is going to be uh, in the beginning, it's a lower initial setup cost because to buy a set of comparators manually to cover the range will be a lower cost outlay. 
uh, customer, the end user, can receive the box, install a comparator, and it's ready to go. And of course, uh, because there are very few parts in there, uh, the actual servicing costs on an annual or biannual basis will be lower because it's a more simple task to actually service and correct any errors in such a comparator. And finally, uh, it's easy to move or relocate within the lab. It's a case of simply turning it off, unplugging, moving to another location, and the comparator is ready to go again. Of course, there are some uh, limitations with manual comparators, and of course, dissemination or substitution weighing, where perhaps you're trying to compare a single reference against a group of weights. And if you have four weights, it's very, very difficult to remove and replace four weights in exactly the same position and to keep the time sequence uh, on a uniform basis because you need the A, B, A or A, B, B, A cycle to be as uniform as possible. And of course, the time taken to unload and load four weights compared to a single weight is going to be quite a bit longer. So other disadvantages, of course, to use a manual comparator, it depends really on the skill of the operator, their handling skill, and to get the performance as is given in the specification, it needs a lot of careful handling and a, a skill set of the operator. Additionally, the operator is influencing the results also by uh, being there himself or herself because of the thermal influence uh, from the body heat of the operator. And we already covered the time sequences may not be as uniform. And there are some issues perhaps of mixing weights, reference and test weights. And at the very small uh, milligram up to 500 milligram, the small wire weights become incredibly difficult to handle. So there are some uh, definite disadvantages of manual against uh, the automation. And I think to, to move on now, we should look at um, why we might consider, uh, for example, automated uh, mass comparison. And first is uh, you get an improved accuracy because you've removed the operator from the process. So all of the influences that I previously mentioned uh, coming from the operator, from the handling, from the uh, non-uniform time sequences, all of this has disappeared because the operator simply loads the weights in the beginning and they remain in place. The, the robotic solution or the automated solution is handling all of the movement. Also, you have the time efficiency because you simply load the weights. The operator is no longer involved in the process and the process will run after you leave. It will run through the evening. It will run on a weekend. And this also adds to the improved accuracy because when the laboratory is closed, maybe two hours after, the process can be set to or on a weekend. And at this time, the conditions in the lab are completely stable because all the influences from the operators moving around, vibrations of machinery that may be adjacent, road noise, all of this is lower over the evening, the nighttime, weekend time. And this also means that when the operators are not there, they're not opening, closing the doors, entering the laboratory, so there are no sudden random uh, small changes of pressure due to people moving around. So the other benefit, of course, is the security because in such a situation, you're loading the weights once and you're removing the error of mixing a, a reference weight with a test weight. 
no matter how careful you are, there's always a risk, and particularly with the smaller weights that have no uh, visible identification markings. And of course, the external influences we, we mentioned from the operator and the environment, all of this is removed when the robot is working through the evening, through the weekend. What's also important is the test weights and, the, and of course, in particular, your reference weights. When you're manually handling these, lifting on and off the weigh pan to also stainless steel, uh, there's a risk to damaging or scratching, scraping the bottom of the weights. This is gone when it's handled by the robot or the automated comparator. Eccentric load error is also eliminated because once the weights are in place, they remain in place, they're not moving. So on top of this, a lot of the automated solutions have self-centering pans, centermatic pans. So if the weight is not exactly in the center, then the pan is moving to align the weight's center of gravity. Dissemination, we mentioned it's very difficult, if not impossible, on a manual comparator, having to load up to four weights, unload the four weights. It's almost impossible to replace them in the same exact position and maintaining their set center of gravity. So once the weights are loaded in position on the carousel or on the robotics solution, they remain in the same position and maintain their collective group center of gravity. And of course, the higher throughput, because these robots will work all day, they'll work all night and at weekends. So if you have a large number of weights to calibrate, then you'll see uh, from some comparisons later just how much more efficient they are in time. So first, we shall take a look at the robotic solutions and to see the advantages that they're giving uh, to us. First, we look at the floor standing mass comparator model CCR10-1000. This comparator is a single solution to cover weights in the range one milligram to 1000 grams. And in this enclosure, there are two mass comparators sitting, a 10 gram and a 1000 gram mass comparator. And the one robot is able to completely manage all of the weights between one milligram and one kilogram, loading and unloading from both of the mass comparators simultaneously, even if required. So here we have a coverage of all of the classes, even class RS, one milligram to 1000 grams, where we call RS our reference standard with one fifth of the uncertainty contribution you would see on a typical E1 tolerance. So such weights are used to calibrate, of course, our E1 weights. So comparator number one is 10 grams by 0.1 of a microgram. And the second comparator, it's 1000 grams by one microgram. And both of these comparators have the integrated sensors to measure the temperature, humidity, and air pressure at the point exactly of the calibration. Additionally, there is a sensor near to the magazine, so we're also able to measure the temperature where the weights are stored. So let's have a look at some additional advantages. This uh, robot system has two magazines for each of the mass comparators. One magazine is already sitting inside of the robot housing with all of the weights loaded. The second magazine is accessible from the outside by the operator. And what that means is that even when the process of calibration is running, the next set of weights can be loaded through the doorway onto the magazine, and they're already then starting to acclimatize so that when the calibration process is finished, the magazine is rotated, 
the weights which were inside are now accessible from the outside. The weights that were on the outside are now in position for calibration. So this single robot has four weight handlers. And the weight handlers are, you'll see in the purple color, one weight handler which will support up to four weights and a single weight handler. And in the turquoise for the smaller robot and mass comparator, the 10 gram, additionally a single weight handler and a four weight handler. Here you can see just how we're able to support four weights on the, the larger weight handler. And this is a very efficient process. The weights remain in place. The reference weight is loaded on the single weight handler and they're simply rotated in front of the mass comparator, placed and replaced. There is no requirement to take any of the weights back to the magazine during the calibration process. And with the two magazines rotate for each of the comparators and a second magazine inside which is supporting the reference weights, we have up to 164 positions to store the weights. And here you'll see a, a short uh, specification table. The 10 gram is working by 0.1 of a microgram and repeatabilities are typical around by 0.2 of a microgram. And to improve the performance, we don't have a continuous range on either of the mass comparators. The 10 gram comparator has a three and a half gram electronic range and two automated substitution weights to take it through up to 10 grams. Likewise, the 1000 gram uh, mass comparator has an electronic range of 21 grams and a readability of one microgram. And our typical repeatability there is two micrograms, which is giving us repeatabilities in the order necessary to calibrate the complete range, one milligram to 1000 grams, even to class RS. So more recent are the addition of tabletop robot systems. So we know that not every laboratory has uh, a large volume of space and the advantages of course tabletop in the name means it has a smaller footprint and of course the, the cost is a little lower and we have some different model options to become a little more flexible. The only restrictions would be in a robot like this is the weights can only be loaded or unloaded at standstill so when the calibration process is finished you have access to the magazine and because it's a tabletop smaller footprint version there is only one mass comparator so in order to cover the range one milligram to one kilogram two robots would be needed and it's still possible to make the dissemination process from the kilogram down to your milligram but again with two robots and you'd have to move the 10 gram weight from the one kilogram robot into the 10 gram robot to continue the process. Having said that, uh, let's have a look now at the options which are available. So with a 0.1 microgram, there is first of all model CCR 6.7-C, which is covering up to uh, five grams uh, for the rest of the world. And in the USA, they do have uh, some six gram weight. So hence the reason why we have coverage up to six grams. And then a slightly more expensive model is highly um, usable because it, it's covering up to the 10 gram range. And if you're looking to manage dissemination from the kilogram down to a milligram, then this is the, the model that you would choose to finish the, the dissemination process. Uh, for a small uh, footprint, it's still an incredibly powerful uh, robotic solution because it has 120 weight positions, which means 
a lot of weights can be loaded in the process. The calibration can run for several hours without the operator having to uh, replace or change weights. And it's still working on a similar pro process like the floor standing system where it's uh, two arms on the, uh, the robot, a single weight handler and a multi weight handler for up to, again, groups of four weights. So we can manage the dissemination or um, calibration by substitution is possible. And again, the comparators have an integrated climate sensor and there's an option to have a second climate sensor next to the weight magazine. And again, the coverage would be up to 10 grams. And again, because it has a one microgram, a 0.1 microgram readability, we're able to cover RS even up to 10 grams down to a milligram. And uh, looking at some of the uh, other applications, such as just simple recalibration in private laboratories or uh, laboratories where dissemination is not necessary or substitution weighing is not necessary. Then we have uh, six decimal place, one microgram uh, comparator, same robot, uh, two uh, arms on the robot, but in this case, they're both single weight handlers. So it's a one-to-one -one weight comparison. And again, uh, there's the integrated climate sensor so that air buoyancy um, can be uh, applied in the calculations afterwards. And this, because of the lower readability, is a coverage of one milligram up to 10 grams. And we're looking here at class E2 downwards. And if we're looking at class E1, then the coverage really starts only from 50 milligrams upwards to 10 grams. Uh, finally, uh, and, uh, in the one kilogram range, will be a model CCR 1006-C, which is offering one kilogram mass comparator by one microgram. And because of the larger weights, of course, the uh, magazine positions are now uh, 21 positions. Dual robotic arm is again offering a single weight carrier and a multi-weight carrier. So dissemination or substitution weighing, as we know, can be also performed integrated climate sensor again to uh, measure the parameters necessary to calculate buoyancy correction. And here we have the coverage from 10 grams up to one kilogram. Again, class RS is possible all the way down to F1. Of course, lower, but normally for um, M class, then uh, manual solutions are quite often used. So a little closer, um, you'll see how the systems are running. So this uh, robotic arm technology uh, of having two weight handlers, it's unique and it's, it's a patented uh, solution from Sartorius. So once the weights are loaded on, they're never replaced back in the magazine. So the robot arm is sitting in front of the mass comparator loading the four weights, taking them off, measuring the single weight, taking it off, reloading. And the the way that we are able to position the four weights on the multi-handler is that they're collected from the magazine and placed in a park position, one by one. And then the multi-gripper, multi-weight handler is able to collect all four weights and then the single weight is collected. And there you see on the uh, lower picture, we have the less expensive model, which is simple one-to-one -one comparison with two single weight handlers. And let's have a look at the throughput. So if we're looking on a manual comparator, working five days a week, we might see 110 E1 weights being calibrated. Whereas with the robot running 24 hours a week, a uh, day, and seven days a week even, um, on a five-day week, we could calibrate 220 weights and even more running over a weekend. Likewise, you'll see E2 weights 
were handling 185 as opposed to 365 on the robot. And F1 weights, again, 320 on a manual comparison, 625 in the same time on the robot solution. So again, emphasizing the efficiency of time. And on top of that, don't forget the accuracy. So here you'll see on the tabletop solutions how the magazine is placed and 120 positions on the magazine and each position directly holds any shape of weight. So we're not requiring any weight loaders or weight carriers to be positioned. You simply load your weights into the magazine and each position has its unique number. You can see on the yellow magazine positions, there are numbers one through to 20, and each of those magazine rows has a letter. So A1, A2, A3, and additionally, you, you can see on the yellow um, positions, there's a lip where when you're loading the weights, you can actually rest your uh, hand, which makes it a little easier for loading the weights onto the magazine. And in order to make life even easier, there is an option to take the weight sorting plate. And this is a plate which has all of the same positions and even the trays are removable. They're labeled. You can see that the tray that's removed is this tray with row number, letter D, numbers one to 20. This allows you to place the customer's weights and your reference weights into position safely you don't have to even load in the laboratory it can be done outside of the mass lab and you're able to record in each position which weight is being loaded then you can take the tray into the laboratory and then load the magazine uh, additionally uh, if you don't already have an appropriate uh, stone table or, or a position in the lab then there are two tables that can be ordered as accessories, a complete solution of, uh, of granite, very high end quality, non-magnetic, uh, very heavy, or at a lower cost, then there's a granite slab on uh, a steel frame. So all of the robots are controlled by a PC with client software. And the user interface doesn't have to be directly in the mass lab, as we've already mentioned. This can be in the manager's office, somewhere um, where there's more room, because quite often the space in the laboratory is limited. And this is where you, you can take your weight loading plate, load all of the weights onto the plate, enter that weights description into your computer interface. And this is all in the convenience of an office or an anti room next to the, the mass lab. So again, just making your life a lot easier by trying to load the weight, that position actually in the mass lab. So just to summarize the uh, three models in the 10 gram range, uh, we have two with uh, 0.1 of a microgram readability, 10 gram and a six gram, and the low cost option 10 gram is by one microgram. Both models, CCR 10.7 and 6.7, the first two models have a multi weight handler and a single weight handler. The lower cost one to one comparison is the last model, CCR 10.6, has two single weight handlers. Typical applications here are for also dissemination and substitution weighing and the lower cost model is one-to-one -one recalibration of weights. So that's given a little indication, hopefully um, any questions we can answer about the robotic solutions, but on top of that, there are what we know as the automatic models, which are carousel-based mass comparators, and then we will also look afterwards at the software for mass determination. So the carousel robot 
uh, automated solutions were the first solutions for automation. And they're generally a little lower in cost than a, a robotic solution. And they still offer you uh, all of or most of the advantages. Um, you remove the operator error, you reduce your eccentric loading, you have the possibility still for dissemination. And of course, uh, it's running again the same uh, time through the evening, weekend time, so it's a time saving and an improvement on accuracy. What are the limitations compared to robots? Well, generally they will cover a lower range. The robot will cover, for example, one milligram up to 10 grams, comes up to a kilogram. With a one kilogram carousel, we can't handle the smaller weights. So at one kilogram would run down only to 100 grams. And of course, with a turntable, there are less positions. The, the weight magazines on the robots are larger. And uh, most manufacturers, um, other than Sartorius, are offering only four positions on some of the carousel uh, solutions. And they're also restricted to with four positions only handling the same mass of reference to the same mass of test weights. So we're going to look now at the three models, which will cover 100 gram up to 20 kilograms. And there is additionally a model which will cover the 50 kilogram range as well. So first uh, would be a model AMC 1006-L. Uh, this has the one kilogram comparator integrated and has a readability here of, of one microgram. And which is quite unique in this range, uh, will have 16 positions on the carousel. And because we're using a PC with the same uh, software, uh, client software as would be seen on the, the robot, it means you can load a range of weights which are different. So you could have, for example, on the one kilogram, a reference weight of one kilogram, a 500 gram, a 200 gram, and a 100 gram, and load your test weights of the same value, and the carousel will rotate under instruction from the PC to compare the same reference value against the same test weight. So they're still fully flexible, just have lower number of positions available on the carousel, it's still possible to manage dissemination because you can arrange a group of weights against a single weight. And an integrated climate sensor you see in the corner is again measuring air pressure, humidity, and temperature at the point of calibration for use in the air buoyancy correction. Looking at the next part of the range, up to 10 kilogram, uh, here would be an integrated mass comparator with 0.01 milligram readability. And because of the uh, larger size of the weights, the carousel will be restricted here to eight positions. But again, it's fully flexible so that you can compare in a calibration run different references in value, 10 kilogram, five kilogram, against similar uh, test weights. and dissemination or comparison by substitution again is possible and the advantage of course you've loaded the weights only once they stay in position so comparing a group of weights against a single weight again you've removed the operator error and finally at the 20 kilogram level would be 0.1 of a milligram which is sufficient in readability to reach the required uncertainty for even uh, class RS. So again, we've moved up the size in mass up to 20 kilograms. So on the same available space, we have only four positions. And it's probably likely you would compare 20 kilo weights against 20 kilo reference. But again, it could be uh, 
a 10 and a 20 kilogram against a 10 and a 20 kilogram. So just to uh, summarize the models here, we're looking at a mass comparator, which has uh, a el smaller electronic range. In the case of the one kilogram, it's 26 grams and the 10 and 20 kilogram, they're both 61 gram electronic range, but with motorized integrated substitution weights that are switched automatically by the client software. So whichever weight you're comparing, it's seamless. It, it's working more or less like a cont continuous range comparator. So typical times for a cycle, you see um, ABBA is 520, 560 seconds, which means that you still have a very, very high throughput of weights. And again, because of the software, you can set it to start at a time after the laboratory has closed to reduce the effects of the influences from the normal daily use. So we've looked now at the automated solutions of both robotic and uh, also the carousel-based comparators. We started in the beginning with manual comparators. What about handling all of that data? Well, there are solutions available, and what Sartorius is offering is a solution called ScalesNet. And ScalesNet is a networked solution where the actual software is loaded onto your file server, and the operator has a tablet or a laptop terminal to log on and to follow the process. So all of the mass comparators that you have, irrespective of the manufacturer, can be connected through the network. Additionally, if you have also a system for measuring already your parameters for climate, it could be an external climate station, this too can be connected through the network. So this means that all the comparators, whether they have integrated climate sensors or you have external sensors can be connected. What else does the software handle? Well, first of all, your complete database of your references can be set up. If your references are changed in the future, they're being recalibrated or decommissioned, you can change this. On top of that, you can also build up your customer database. So when a calibration process is being uh, finished, you've got the history of those weights from your customer. And once logged on, the operator has full guidance. You can see on the picture of the screen that you might see on the operator's terminal, you have X and S, which is the, the reference standard and the customer weight. And you give them the clear instruction of when to take off the weight, when to change it for the reference. And there you'll see below the process has already had the first cycle and it's in the process of the second ABBA cycle. So the operator has full guidance through the whole process. Also, it is managing which comparator uh, the operator should be using for the reference uh, class E1, E2, or so on. So all the data is collected through the whole process. It's set uh, and at a later date, of course, the uh, manager can interrogate the system to see has the whole uh, calibration process being completed because if a box of weights from a milligram to 20 kilograms has been calibrated it may not all be on the same and definitely won't be on the same comparator but it may not be on the same day so once they're completed the manager is notified he then is able to see all of the corrections for air buoyancy, the uncertainty calculations are done, any failures are notified, and can move to producing the calibration certificate. Additionally, on top of this, of course, the software is looking at the performance of each of the comparators, manual, robot, or automatic, and can see any degradation in the repeatability that may be happening over time of any particular comparator and of course it goes without saying it's uh, full traceability with the administrator issuing log on for the operator via password so a complete solution to manage the whole process of calibration 
with all of the mass comparators that are in the laboratory. So connection we've already briefly mentioned, but all of the manual comparators, all robots, all automatic, integrated climate sensors, all external climate stations, and all brands of mass comparator, because we don't always expect that any mass lab will only have one brand. Very unusual, but would be nice, especially if it was all sartorius. So I think we've covered now quite in some depth and given information on the metrology in, in mass. Let's have a look at volume because there are some difficulties handling some of the multi-channel pipettes, as you can see now. They can have up to 12 channels and the calibration process can be quite uh, time consuming, difficult, and with a lot of errors possible. So in general, pipette calibration is very similar to mass calibration. It's there to determine any deviation from the expected value, in this case, the dose volume against the set volume. And we're looking at a number of standards certification according to ISO 9001 for laboratories, accreditation to ISO 17025, and people are working generally to uh, GLP and GMP guidelines. There is a, an ISO which is to specify the standards of the pipettes and the calibration procedures that you must follow when recalibrating or initially calibrating any of these pipettes. One of the most used solutions, of course, is gravimetric, where you're dispensing a volume, you're calculating from its mass the actual volume and applying the corrections. So gravimetric solutions are um, most popular. You get a good level of compliance. You can minimize the errors, possibly increase your efficiency if we look at how we are able to calibrate 12-channel pipettes and reduce the cost per calibration. So ISO 8655 is defining for each pipette volume the resolution of the balance that's required, the repeatability and linearity, and the uncertainty of measurement. So if we're looking at pipettes 10 microliters to 100 microliters, we clearly need a balance with two decimal places. These pipettes in this range, 10 microliter to 100 microliter, are probably the most popular or, or the most prolific that we find in laboratories, closely followed by 100 microliter to 1,000 microliter. So this is where it becomes difficult on a multi-channel pipette. You see in the picture a pipette that has 12 channels and you have a simply a laboratory balance and you're trying to calibrate all 12 channels, you'd have to do it one by one. There you see the pipette has one tip to calibrate the last channel number 12. If you read the instruction manual from the manufacturer, they will tell you for this pipette to work correctly, all tips must be connected and all tips must be filled with liquid and dispensed the liquid at the same time. Because if you only have one tip, then you're not using the pipette in the way it was designed. And you may end up with errors because the pipette is simply not performing how it should with all 12 channels connected. So if you only have a single balance, then it's going to be rather difficult. And if you do, it can take one and a half hours or even longer to calibrate all 12 channels. So really, if you can avoid, don't do channel by channel because the pipette is not working properly. So how could this be possible? Well, there is a solution called SpeedCal, and it's called SpeedCal Mobile because as well as staying in the laboratory, it can be taken out because a lot of the pharmaceutical companies will not release their pipettes off-site, so they have to be calibrated at the place where they're being used. So SpeedCal solution, it has 12 integrated weighing cells, 12 balances, which means that you can actually then calibrate your 12-channel pipette or an 8-channel or a 4-channel pipette 
correctly with all tips. And a 12 channel could be calibrated in as little as six or eight minutes, making 10 measurements on each channel at three different volume levels. And additionally, where the pipette is dispensing the liquid, there is a vapor trap to prevent evaporation. So here we would have, as I mentioned, 30 weighings because you're calibrating the pipette at its nominal value, 50% of that value and 10% of the value. And this is according to the ISO 8655, which is defining the way that the pipette should be calibrated. Here you can see all 12 channels in one go. And the reservoir is also measuring the temperature, the actual liquid, which means we're able to accurately monitor its volume through applying the temperature of the liquid, which is normally by distilled water, and then converting that to mass. So it's great because all the tips are connected. All the channels are measured at the same time. You can simply connect a laptop or a tablet, measure the volumes, record the volumes. On top of that, there is a software solution available to do all of the calculations and corrections for you. Or you can easily integrate into your own calibration software because it has a web service interface. It's possible also to have a lower cost option of either a four channel or an eight channel with only four or eight balances, but it would still be possible to calibrate 12 channels even on a speed cal that had only four weighing cells because you can still have all 12 tips connected dispensing the first four, the middle four, and the last four. So all of the uh, models have the same weighing capacity, 21 grams, and they take only about four seconds after dispensing to becoming stable and giving you the results. So you can stay in your lab 100% or because it comes in a carry case, you can see at the top, this is transportable and you can take on site to a customer. The main target group is 10 microliters to 100 microliters and 100 microliters up to 1000 microliter because those are the most common multi-channel pipettes. There are some, of course, you can see from one microliter to 10 microliters, but that would require a six decimal place weighing cell. And until now, the market is quite small, and this is why Sartorius has not yet developed a six decimal place version. Not enough customers, not enough pipettes. If the situation changes, then of course we can look at this. So almost there. So basically, in order to make the corrections for the temperature of the liquid, we have also the same climate monitor, or you can use an external climate station to measure the temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. All are necessary for the correction or the Z factor, which is known as in the pet calibration, to convert the mass from the volume that you've dispensed, or the way around volume from the mass you've dispensed. And the liquid reservoir is an option, and this liquid reservoir is constantly measuring the temperature at the time that you're doing the calibration and through the time. So you always have an up-to-date temperature of the actual liquid, the double distilled water. So you heard me mention each weighing cell has 21 grams. So when it's getting close to being full, you'll be alerted and you have a suction pump to remove the liquid and this is also connecting to a, a manifold so you can make, empty all 12 channels in one go so finally of course we mentioned software because you have a lot of data to manipulate a lot of calculations to determine the uh, volume and the uncertainty and to make the correction, the Z factor correction for the volume. So this is all 
or can all be handled by a commercial package software which simply plugs in connects directly to the speed cal complies with all the regulations and even for the pharmaceutical companies uh, fda 21 cfr part 2 which is uh, part 11 which is uh, available in the professional version so it's great for both in-house calibration and it's great for a calibration provider it makes easier the calibration of the multi-channel pipettes and this software is not just compatible with the speed cal but it's also working together with standard laboratory balances of many manufacturers connecting also with usb or rs232 and likewise you could install this on your file server and have a local terminal and of course it has all the user management management features for operator logon and security so i'd like to invite um, any further questions and at this point we'll either try to handle the questions directly or if we need a little bit of time to think about it we promise to come back to you with the correct answer to your question so for myself i'd just like to say thank you uh, on behalf of Sartorius for taking the time to listen to our presentation and i hope that you've been able to take something away thank you very much